Okey baik bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat pagi. Apa khabar semuanya? Are you okay? Okey uh, saya tak tahu semua uh, are you okay ke tak sebab uh, apa? Semua mikrofon tak okey kot. So tak apalah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, saya tengok kat sini. Oh, okay. Ada quite a few of you yang tak breakfast lagi. Kesiannya tak breakfast lagi. Okay lah. Uh, kita usahakan supaya kita boleh um, habiskan kelas ni 5 uh, to 10 minutes earlier. So you can have the time to get your breakfast before the next class. Uh, tapi most of you have simple breakfast lah. Uh, tapi uh, yelah kan um, apa ada yang breakfast dia uh, sangat ma saya tengok macam hotel punya breakfast ya, macam big breakfast ada ada macam-macam kat situ ada telur ada sausage, ada butter ada yang makan waffle macam-macam hmm, Okay, so uh, thank you so much for your submissions and uh, insyaAllah kita cuba uh, apa, kita cuba habiskan 5 hingga 10 minit lebih awal supaya kita boleh um, apa, kita ada ruang untuk uh, ambil breakfast lepas ni before the next class, okay? So bila saya tengok reflection on uh, absorption of digested food sebelum ini Okay, absorption of digested food sebelum ini saya dapati ada dua soalan atau dua uh, dua what was untuk dalam ruang what was hard tu ada dua yang ditanya oleh ramai murid iaitu the first one ialah dia tak faham pasal adaptation tu dan nombor dua dia tak faham pasal villas. So uh, this first two slides ni is a quick summary of absorption of digested food ya. Yeah. So bila kita habis pasal digestion uh, in the small intestine, okay, um, we will take a look at absorption that occurs in this particular area which is the ileum. So the ileum is a, one of the components in small intestine that is very long. Sebab itulah kita nampak uh, dia bergulung, bergulung, dia berlipat-lipat uh, di dalam kita punya uh, apa intestinal area, gastrointestinal area at the lower part because it is very long. Sebab itu kita nampak macam tu ya. So when we take a look at the cross section of the ileum, bila kita potong ileum tu, kita akan nampak dekat sini the internal layer of ileum is covered by this brush like structures kan nampak macam berus kan so this tiny projections are called villi tapi kalau kita refer to one structure kita panggil villus lah so um, dalam pada permukaan ileum ni is covered by villus so villus ni lah Uh, the this structure is the functional unit of ileum. Kenapa saya panggil functional unit? Kita bila bercakap pasal ileum, we are talking about the process of absorption of digested food. Which part that actually do the work? The villi lah. Okay, sebab tu kita panggil the functional unit. Yang buat kerja absorption tu ialah villi. So, let's take a look at villi. Okay, villi ni uh, kalau kita tengok pada structure ni okay, the first layer outside we can see here is epithelial layer atau epithelium. Between the epithelium we can find goblet cells and then um, uh, when we take a look at the Uh, epithelium, epithelium tu dia tu apa dia punya layer turun ke bawah membentuk satu lengkuk dekat situ uh, apa uh, forming a groove, a sort of groove at uh, at the bottom part there. So that groove is a type of gland that secretes enzymes. And then uh, on the surface of 
each epi uh, each cells that make up the epithelium we can see um bright tiny tiny brushes on top there nama tiny brushes tu ialah microvilli and then uh, goblet cells dah okay and then um inside the epithelium layer we can find capillary blood capillary networks and also yang warna hijau ni ialah lactea so when we take a look at the epithelial layer epithelial layer is very thin only one cell thick nampak lapisan ni hanya setebal satu sel saja so daripada kawasan ileum absorb uh, digested food will diffuse into the epithelium layer kan epithelial layer so dia nak diffuse tu dia hanya perlu move across one cell only because villus is very thin only covered by one layer of epithelial cells kemudian each epithelial cells here kita tengok dia berbulu so bulu-bulu ni apa bulu-bulu ni ialah microvilli so the presence of microvilli further increase absorption area for digested food and then between the epithelial cells we can find goblet cell function dia is to secrete mucus to aid digestion the food since the food is moving so the presence of mucus helps to uh, move the food along the small intestine along the ileum furthermore there are substances in the ileum that also helps to protect the lining of the uh, ileum from infection dalam tu ada lysozyme dan sebagainya lah kita akan cerita dengan lebih lanjut pasal body defense function of mucus ni when we talk about uh, body defense chapter nanti ya and then um, we can see uh, ada apa um, struktur yang warna merah dengan biru ni itu adalah network of blood capillaries so when we talk about digested food uh, before this there are two categories kan satu category digested food that can dissolve in water another category is digested food that cannot dissolve in water if the digested food is uh, can dissolve in water it will uh, di, apa, diffuse uh, into the epithelium layer straight towards the network of blood capillaries kalau substance tu it can dissolve in lipid kalau dia larut lemak the substance macam fatty acid glycerol vitamin A D E K diffuse through the epithelium layer epithelial layer straight to the lacteal dia tak masuk blood capillary lah sebab dia larut lemak dan last sekali uh, intestinal gland dekat kawasan groove yang saya tunjuk dekat bawah ni yang dilabel sebagai Lebecune gland uh, uh, fungsi dia ialah apa, mengandungi digestive enzyme okay so um, when we take a look at all the digested food from small intestine as i mentioned earlier it can be categorized into substances that can dissolve in water and substances that can dissolve in lipid yang bahagian atas ni fructose glucose galactose amino acid vitamin b and c and also water diffuse directly from the epithelium into the network of blood capillaries how do they move from out of the blood capillary into the blood capillary um untuk fructose they will have to use facilitated diffusion for glucose and galactose have to use active transport same as amino acid while vitamin b and c since it is 
substances that can dissolve in water it will move along you uh, move along atau absorb with water and of course water bila nak masuk blood capillaries via osmosis lah so um, kenapa kenapa kena buat active transport we don't want to leave any of the digested glucose and amino acid behind inside in, uh, stay behind atau stay inside the lumen sebab kalau ada glucose dengan amino acid whatever that is not absorbed here it will move along to the large intestine nanti jadi waste material pula lah so walaupun glucose and galactose ni is already at high concentration level in the blood capillaries we still want to transport these three substances into the blood capillary sebab tu kena buat active transport because it is against concentration gradient melawan uh, apa from high concentration air, from low concentration area out of blood capillaries to high concentration area inside the blood capillaries and finally uh, substances that can dissolve in lipid will diffuse directly via simple diffusion to the lactia. Kenapa simple diffusion? Sebab substances yang larut lemak boleh dissolve uh, through phospholipid bilayer. Sebab itulah hanya menggunakan simple diffusion. So up until now do you still have any question regarding um, the role of villas for absorption ada apa-apa soalan tak dekat ruang ni saya bagi um, apa saya bagi ruang untuk tanya soalan okey Okay, so kita boleh masuk ke uh, chapter hari ni lah iaitu assimilation ya. Yeah? So now since all of the digested food has already been absorbed, kita nak pakai nutrient tu untuk apa? So nak the name of the process is assimilation. It refers to the use of absorbed nutrients to synthesize complex compounds. Kita dah absorb, sekarang ni kita nak pakai macam mana glukos, amino acid, uh, acid lemak dengan glycerol dan and so on and so forth lah. Okay, um, before I start with uh, assimilation ni, in the in-call messages space, I've provided the link for today's attendance ya. Yeah? Jangan lupa, saya lupa nak embed dalam pedek nanti isi ya. Yeah? Alright, so let's start. Um, okay, so um, assimilation of digested food, the story started with what happens to the nutrient in the blood capillaries. So kita tahu tadi dalam blood capillaries ada fructose, glucose, galactose, amino acid, vitamin B and C and also water. So all of these nutrients will be transported to the hepatic portal vein. It is a vein that um, collect all the blood from spleen and also from the uh, intestine area directly to the liver. Sebab itu lama the hepatic portal vein because it connects directly to the liver. So semua uh, salur darah yang berada di kawasan intestin tu akan bersambung direct pergi ke hepatic portal vein masuk ke dalam liver. Liver akan buat as, uh, assimilation dulu. Basically liver ni akan jadi macam uh, checkpoint lah sebelum all of these substances transported to the 
uh, other parts of the body. Okay. Alright, so nama dia ialah Hepatic Porter V. Okay, nanti boleh update. Tolong update dulu sekejap ya. So the main function of liver besides being the nutrient checkpoint before the nutrient is transported to all parts of the body, the new, uh, liver also function as to filter out any toxic substances contained in the blood before the blood goes back into the uh, entire circulation. So, um, uh, uh, bila kita tengok rajah, kita cuba tengok rajah yang satu lagi ya. Okay, nama dia hepatic portal vein. Okay. Lepas ni kita tengok lagi satu rajah. Nak tunjukkan lagi satu point of view. Hepatic portal vein tu rupa dia macam mana ya. Lepas tu baru kita cerita pasal hmm, lactia pula lah. Okay itu cerita pasal blood capillaries ya. So all of the capillaries atau blood vessels that are connected to the intestine area will be, will convene, will combine to form hepatic portal vein and transport blood to the liver for uh, as a checkpoint to check uh, it, apa, the liver act as a checkpoint to conduct regulatory mechanisms to conduct assimilation of glucose, amino acids uh, and then once it is done, barulah blood release into the circulatory system. So here is another point of view of the hepatic portal vein. If you can see here, portal vein tu dia ada pecah dua. Satu pergi ke kiri, satu pergi ke kanan. Since our liver has two loops, ada dua uh, komponen berbeza lah. Okay, now let's take a look at lactia. So, lactia ni anak-anak is another a structure that focuses on the absorption of um, fat dissolved substances lah, lip, uh, substances that can dissolve in lipid such as fatty acid, glycerol and vitamin A, D, E, K. So, untuk lactia, it will combine together to form bigger lymphatic vessel atau lymph vessel in the lymphatic system and then uh, once it is inside lymphatic vessel cuba tengok dalam diagram tu okay lymphatic vessel will move upwards towards the thoracic duct thank you very good okay move upwards towards the thoracic duct and then from thoracic duct, barulah all the contents in the lymphatic system transfer into left subclavian vein masuk ke dalam circulatory, uh, blood circulatory system. So, uh, nanti bila kita belajar part ni, kita akan nampak dengan lebih jelas lah. Basically, lymphatic system ni is a different system to blood circulatory system. Bila bahan-bahan masuk ke dalam lactia, kemudian uh, lactia tu bersambung membentuk lymphatic vessel dan juga uh, dihantar ke thoracic duct. Ini semua adalah komponen in one system called lymphatic system. The substances absorbed inside the lactia is not in the blood. It is transported into lymphatic system once the materials in the lymphatic system uh, goes to the thoracic duct then it will be transferred to blood circulatory system in at the left subclavian vein. Sist uh, lactia ni adalah apa sistem yang berasingan daripada sistem apa 
uh, sistem peredaran darah. Bila bahan-bahan ni, last kali pun, last-last sekali last kita memang nak masukkan ke dalam sistem peredaran darah dengan cara macam mana? Dengan cara lymphatic vessel bawa semua dia punya contents pergi ke satu tem tempat di bahagian atas dada kita ni nama dia thoracic duct. So thoracic duct ni bersambung dengan left subclavian vein sejenis salur darah. The left subclavian vein, once the substances enters the left subclavian vein, kita dah kata bahan-bahan tersebut dipindahkan dari lymphatic system masuk ke dalam sistem peredaran darah. Barulah all the fatty acid, uh, all the lipids and the vitamins will be transported by the blood circulatory system throughout our body. Sama juga uh, kalau kita nak tengok Uh, apa overview, uh, this is an overview of lymphatic system. Cuba tengok pada bahagian bawah tu, sekejap ya. Saya uh, share saya punya screen. Okay. Cuba kita tengok pada bahagian bawah ni. Oh, I think I choose blue color. Okay, pada bahagian bawah ni we can see here there are lots of lymphatic capillaries. This area that I highlighted here is the area where the lymphatic capillary, eh, sorry, the lacteal convene atau combine to form lymphatic vessel. Dan bila dah jadi lymphatic vessel, all the contents of the lymphatic vessels move outwards to the thoracic duct. Dekat sini ya, ini thoracic duct. So, bila sampai ke thoracic duct, the contents of thoracic duct transfer to this structure which is the left subclavian vein. Okay. Mari kita tengok pula um, the next part ya. Yeah. Okay. Once the substances arrive at the liver, the liver function as to regulate that, uh, regulate and control the quantity of nutrients that enters the blood circulatory system. Based on your reference, can you complete the assimilation of digested food here? Uh, what now, what, bila kita sebut assimilation tadi, basically kita nak guna nutrien, glukos, amino acid untuk apa dekat liver. Kemudian kalau glukos berlebih, liver buat apa? Kalau asid amino berlebih, liver buat apa? It, uh, jadi uh, apa itulah uh, nak kata apa dia? I, itulah yang dikatakan assimilation of digested food by the liver. Liver sendiri tu terdiri daripada sel. Dia pun nak guna untuk buat apa. Tapi once the nutrient is in excess, dia buat apa? Amino acid bila excess, proses dia tak sama dengan bila glukos excess.
Okay, some of you have already finished. Okay, so when we uh, when we take a look at um, excess amino and excess glucose, there are specific function of liver there. Liver buat apa pada excess, uh, excess amino acid? Nama proses dia apa? Liver buat apa pada excess glucose? Hasilnya pergi mana? Okey, Ashraf jangan lupa masuk dalam pedek ya. Okey, so let's take a look at a sample answer here. Okey, uh, mari kita tengok. As I mentioned earlier, Mm, substances that can dissolve in water will enter the blood capillaries and blood capillaries will converge and transport its content to the hepatic portal vein directly to the liver. Liver will uh, regulate the amount of nutrients in the blood and the apa after the assimilation process is completed inside the liver then the blood will move all to the all parts of the body so apa yang berlaku dalam liver pertama sekali they are uh, substances yang masuk ke dalam liver atau regulated by the liver is glucose and amino acid so glucose is used for cellular respiration while amino acids are used for synthesizing plasma protein and enzymes. Untuk liver sendiri pun dia perlu gunakan glucose dengan amino acids untuk maintain the cells that make up the liver. So sebab itulah uh, ada poin pertama pasal glucose dengan poin yang kedua tu. Okay, once the liver identified the uh, um, a certain amount of excess amino acids, it will conduct deamination. Kena tulis pro, nama proses tu ya. Excess amino acid will go through deamination process to uh, to be converted into urea and excreted through urine. Nama proses untuk convert amino excess amino acid ni ialah deamination. At the end of deamination, amino acids have have become urea and then urea will be excreted through urine. So you must state the name of the process ya. Yeah? Nama dia ialah deamination. Okay. What happened to excess glucose pula? So, excess glucose will be converted to glycogen and stored in the liver. When our body detect there is a drop in glucose level, mungkin sebab kita puasa ke, atau kita skip lunch ke, uh, dan sebagainya, ataupun kita tak breakfast pagi tadi, macam apa, sa, apa some of you. So, the deep in glucose level, the decrease in glucose level in our blood will be detected by our nervous system which will stimulate the liver to convert glycogen back to glucose and then the glucose will move to the blood circulatory system. So, uh, the last function, the last function of liver is detoxification where several toxic substances such as alcohol, certain types of drugs will be uh, identified 
and expel through urine. So, liver akan filter all of these toxic substances. Kemudian, these toxic substances will be transported to the kidney for uh, excretion by the uh, kidney through urine. So, nanti bi, uh, perbincangan mengenai uh, apa yang berlaku selepas detoxification, we will talk more on this during urine formation. Ma, chapter berapa saya tak ingat dalam homeostasis lah. Okay, so basically dia punya main point kat sini ialah liver guna glucose for cellular respiration and guna amino acid to synthesize plasma protein and enzyme. Bila berlebih, excess glucose is converted to glycogen. Excess amino acid, acids will go through deamination to be converted to become urea and excreted through urine. Okay, ini adalah diagramnya. Okay, yeah. so bila dia dah buat assimilation process, glucose yang nak guna untuk liver cells dah ambil, excess glucose yang untuk disimpan bentuk glycogen dah disimpan, the rest of the glucose will go to the uh, go to the blood circulatory system to be sent to the body cell. Sama juga dengan amino acid. Amino acids, the part, the amount that the liver needed to conduct its own activity will be taken and then the excess amino acids will be converted to urea while the rest of the amino acids will be sent to the body cells via blood circulatory system. Macam mana pula dengan lipid? So, lipid cerita dia lain. Lipid sebab dia masuk dalam lacteal, dia tak pergi ke hepatic portal vein. Macam kita sebut tadi, lipid akan masuk pergi ke thoracic duct. Dari thoracic duct, masuk ke dalam right, right subclavian vein dan transported throughout, throughout of the body to each of the cells. So, cells juga dapat lipid from circulatory system tapi bukan Se, uh, tapi tidak ditapis oleh liver lah. Okay. So, once glucose, amino acid and lipid arrive at the body cells, what are the assimilation process for amino acids, glucose and lipid in the cells? Ha, apakah proses-proses assimilasi amino acid Asi amino glucose dengan lipid bila dah sampai dalam uh, sel. Ha, sel guna untuk buat apa dan sebagainya lah.
Okay, very good. You are on the right track over here. Ha, memang uh, apa untuk glukos, there are three uh, assimilation process in the cells. Uh, dua untuk amino acids and tiga untuk lipid. Okay, mari kita tengok satu persatu. So, for amino acids, okay, amino acids is used to synthesize protoplasm. Protoplasm tu basically the components of the cell lah. The plasma membrane, the um, all the organelles and uh, all the enzymes and the hormones that are required by the cells or excreted by the cells. And uh, amino acids are also used to repair damaged tissues. And also when we talk about uh, mitosis and meiosis before this, uh, we, be, we also talk about cell cycle, kan? Where there is a growth phase, there is a phase where the cell increase the number of cellular components. So these processes requires amino acids. Okay, for glucose pula, uh, it is used to release energy, to produce energy through cellular respiration. And then in the muscles, excess glucose is kept as glycogen. Where, uh, and another one is uh, glucose is also used for Cellul various cell processes lah. Uh, sama ada uh, kita nak buat uh, for production of extracellular enzyme ke atau kita nak buat uh, apa this, apa macam white blood cells conducting phagocytosis to uh, to destroy pathogens. So this process occur, uh, also uses energy. And then untuk lipid pula, okay, lipid is used to build plasma membrane. As we all know, the main component of plasma membrane is phospholipid. Ha, dekat situ daripada nama dia pun kita tahu building block dia adalah lipid. And then lipid is also kept in adipose tissue as stored energy when there is no more glycogen. Glycogen dalam badan semua dah habis. Then we will release, um, we, then we will burn lipid to release energy when glucose is insufficient. So dia punya step dia ialah nombor satu, memula badan akan gunakan glucose available in the blood. And then when there is no more glucose, our body will break down glycogen, forming glucose. When there is no more glycogen, then our body will move to the uh, use of lipid uh, for cellular respiration. Tapi dia punya proses panjang sikit lah, has to be converted into uh, glucose balik lah. Uh, Kenapa, why this process is possible? Because the elements that make up lipid adalah sama dengan the elements that make up glucose. Iaitu carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Cuma dia punya ratio between um, hydrogen dan oxygen tu slightly different. Itu saja. But still we, our body can use it lah. Okay. Uh, habiskan, habiskan. Boleh, habi boleh habiskan, I give you another three minutes. You can refer to the slide, uh, to um, Alina's answer here in the Google Meet. Kalau nak refer. Okay. And then uh, after this, we will discuss about def defecation pula. Ha, dan habis ni tinggal nak cerita pasal defecation sahaja.
Okay. Um, okay. Saya, saya nampak ada ada kawan kita lagi seorang je lagi. Dia tinggal nak buat lagi satu point je lagi ya. So kita tambah sikit lah masa tu dia. Uh, tinggal sikit je lagi dia nak habiskan. Okay. Nanti kita nak masuk defecation pula ya. So when we talk about defecation nanti kita nak tengok. Uh, yes, we have absorbed digested food. But how about undigested food and other things that are also uh, apa, can be found inside the lumen atau inside the um, space of our okay of our uh, small intestine so um, the process is defecation where we uh, where the undigested food dead cells epithelial cells fiber and water from apa enters the large intestine from the ilia maknanya uh, masa kita belajar pasal digestion hari tu the uh, kita tahu semua intestine ada tiga part kan dua denum jejunum dengan ilium kan so dua denum and jejunum is where digestion occurs ilium is where absorption occurs habis dah part dalam small intestine sekarang ni all the undigested food dead cells epithelial cells and water goes to the next part of the intestine the, the first part of the large intestine they move slowly throughout the large intestine right from the beginning near the ileum and right to the end near the rectum the movement tu is aided by peristaltic action kita pun the muscles of our large intestine contract and relax moving the undigested food around the around the <laughs> large intestine atau ada juga orang refer large intestine as the colon so there are two main functions of large intestine which are Yes, which are absorption of water and vitamins. Kenapa absorption of water and vitamins? Sebab vitamin tu larut air macam kita sebut masa um, absorption of digested food dekat villus tadi kan. Vitamin B dengan C boleh absorb masuk dalam villus sebab dia larut air, dia bergerak sekali dengan air. It is the same case as in the large intestine as well. Since the vitamins uh, are are dissolved in water. So, when the large intestine absorb water, vitamin go along also lah. Okay. And then, the next uh, the next function is the formation of feces. Feces tu apa? Najis lah, tahi lah. Okay. Formation of feces. Those are the two functions of um, large intestine atau nama lain dia colon. So for the next part kita nak tengok what are the steps. <laughs> Kenapa ah sebab sebab saya sebut tahi ke? You know that in in New Zealand kan dia apa kaum apa kaum uh, asli dekat situ ialah the ori app origin people there is um, the Maori people kan. So many parts of New Zealand it, uh, uses the original names uh, given by the Maori people. For example, there is a lake there. Nama dia ialah Piu Piu Tahi. So at first when I read that, uh, apa, saya ketawa lah sebab macam tahi kan. How many times you see a place nama dia tahi kan. So apparently dalam bahasa Maori, tahi tu is, is number one. Piu-piu is a type of bird. So the number one bird lah. So basically if you are saying to people in Maori culture lah, if you saying you are tahi, uh, bukanlah orang tu sucks tapi orang tu adalah nombor satu. So macam it can be apa two ways lah. It can be a backhanded compliment ke you are tahi. Macam pelik pula ya. Ha, tapi basically itulah. That is apa. Tapi memang nak kata orang-orang uh, Maori ni adalah orang-orang Maori, orang-orang asli di Hawaii, dia memang dia punya origin tu 
memang lebih kurang uh, ancestral root tu sama macam kita. Uh, sebab itu dia punya bahasa tu macam nak dekat-dekat dengan kita kan. Dan basically macam orang Maori tu ialah kalau kita pergi jumpa, kita, kalau kamu pernah jumpa orang Maori ni macam nampak macam orang Melayu yang besar, rangka besar. Uh, menarik jugalah. Hmm. You are the tahi, you are the tahi in my heart. Sabar je lah. Alright, so thank you so much for your submissions. Okay, uh, so, seronok pula kan. Macam freely boleh sebut tahi masa kelas kan. Hmm, okay, tak apa. Kita sebut, kita sebut ni dalam learning space kan. Kita nak belajar kan. Macam mana tahi ni terjadi? Kita nak tahu. Okay, so. So for absorption of water and vitamins, uh, absorption tu, what are the substances absorbed in the large intestine? Bolehkah kamu senaraikan balik? What are the substances absorbed by the large intestine? Apakah namanya? Okay, number one, water and mineral salts. Good. Um, metabolic byproducts of some bacteria. Yes. For example, macam yang ditulis dekat sini. For example, metabolic byproducts tu macam uh, uh, apa? vitamin B, vitamin K and also folic acid. These bacteria are the natural flora inside our colon. Apa yang selalu iklan kata bacteria baik. Ah, okay. So bacteria baik tu uh, hidup dalam kita punya large intestine uh, and apa? Producing a few metabolic byproducts lah that help us to maintain our health, kan? Kemudian, um, alright, very good. Okay, so dia pun, kenapa metabolic byproducts ni absorb? Macam saya sebut tadi lah, uh, most of it because it is uh, it can dissolve in water, macam vitamin B dan mineral salts. Untuk vitamin K tu, sebab dia boleh dissolve in lipid, so it can be absorbed directly. Uh, via simple diffusion kan sebab dia boleh larut lipid, boleh tembus fosfolipid by layer. So let's take a look here. Once the water and vitamins are absorbed, sebenarnya main function large intestine ni memang mainly untuk absorb water lah. So basically uh, apa daripada small intestine dekat ilium tu, makanan masuk into the large intestine still liquidy. Masih dalam keadaan cecair kan. So when the water is absorbed, the remaining waste become semi-solid called feces atau najis atau tahi lah. So basically uh, when the uh, undigested food and all the remaining waste to move uh, apa, from from the opening near the ilium daripada apa bukaan large intestine dekat ilium sampailah dia pergi ke rectum dekat dengan anus tu uh, pergerakan sepanjang pergerakan tu berlaku ha masa tu lah absorption of water berlaku so as the materials move along the colon dia makin lama makin jadi keras lah makin jadi solid lah so towards the end bila dah sampai rectum tu uh, the feces now contains dead cells sebab bila uh, apa undigested materials tu lalu dia akan bergeser dengan intestine. So adalah dead cells yang akan tercabut lah. And then uh, waste product uh, seperti bile pigments and also bacteria and toxic substances. So um, this is why we need to have, uh, we need to Uh, consume fiber. Kita tak digest fiber. Tapi when the undigested material move along the colon, the fiber will sort of uh, wrap 
the feces, the solid feces ni and enable the undigested material move smoothly. Ha, tapi tak boleh laju sangat lah. Nanti jadi diarrhea pula kan. Move smoothly ar- uh, around the colon so that absorption of water can occur. Kal- uh, kalau kita tak ambil fiber, uh, undigested material tu bergerak sangat lambat. Bila bergerak sangat lambat, we absorb too much water from the undigested material menyebabkan najis tu jadi keras sangat pula dan saiz dia besar. So, susah pula kita nak buat defecation nanti kan. So, kena kena ada keseimbangan lah kat situ. So, mari kita tengok dekat sini. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, apa the undigested material tu kan move along the colon atau large intestine so selain daripada fiber the walls of large intestine also secrete mucus to uh, become a lubricant that smoothen the movement of feces until the anus and then uh, it takes 12 to 24 hours before uh, the undigested material enters the rectum Uh, eh, tak payah sebut undigested material lah, feces lah kan okay, So feces lah akan berkumpul dalam rectum Until the pressure in the rectum increases And triggers the need to expel feces from the body Dalam, pada permukaan rectum ni There are nerve fibers kat situ Ada uh, apa? Ada banyak saraf kat situ yang detect Rectum ni penuh ke tak penuh? So, bila rectum tu penuh, it will signal the brain uh, yang menghadirkan apa kod angkut perasaan tu lah. Perasaan nak pergi tandas tu lah. Okay. So, um, basically that is the formation of feces and def- uh, apa defecation. Defecation tu ni lah the last part lah. When the rectum is full, uh, it will signal the brain to start Uh, apa that uh, it was in the brain so that we can do the necessary steps to uh, have to go to the space where we can where the rectum muscle can contract and expel feces from the anus okay so mari kita teng- bila kita tengok kembali the formation of feces ni very simple compared to the absorption and or digested uh, food so can you summarize The formation of feces in four sentences. Bolehkah kamu uh, rumuskan formation of feces dalam empat ayat? Ha, empat markah tu maksud dia empat ayat lah.
um, saya uh, terlupa saya selalu nak bagi tahu tapi saya, saya bagi tahu jugaklah sekarang saya memang selalu share senarai murid yang dah masuk dan sebagainya so if you have problems you cannot attend my class today ke tomorrow ke next week ke if you cannot attend you can private message me so that I can help you by providing you the materials in PDF version. So, kalau student, saya keluar senarai, tapi uh, student tu tak communicate pun dengan saya kenapa dia tak datang dan sebagainya. Jadi, macam saya susah nak nak memahami what is your problem. Okay. So, kalau problem dia ialah internet connection, ah uh, mungkin saya boleh bantu sediakan bahan yang sesuai dengan internet connection kamu yang bermasalah ke ha, dan sebagainya lah. Saya tak marah if you cannot attend the class. Uh, as long as you do something about it, you communicate with me, saya tahu kenapa tak datang, kalau tertidur ke dan sebagainya. Uh, apa Setiap kali kita ada kelas pun, kita ada rakaman kan. You still can catch up. Don't worry, okay? Alright. Okay, good. <coughs> Uh, uh, memang uh, nak kata apa ya uh, Bila kita cerita formation of thesis Kita kena cerita dulu Materials nak jadi thesis tu Okay Kita kena cerita dulu Materials yang nak jadi thesis tu Datang dari mana So uh, Saya setuju dengan uh, Permulaan yang ditulis oleh, sekejap ya, mana tadi? Eh, sekejap ya. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sekejap. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, okay. So, saya bersetuju dengan uh, permulaan yang ditulis oleh Nurin Adani ni. Sebab uh, Nurin Adani ni, dia cerita dulu pasal uh, nutrient starting from ilium. Dia cerita dulu starting dia tu berlaku dekat ilium. Nutrients are absorbed completely in the ilium. Then it will enter the large intestine and move slowly through peristaltic action. That is a good starting point. Okay, very good Nurin. Bagus. Okay, don't, kita kena cerita dulu asal usul bahan-bahan yang nak yang formation of feces ni datang dari mana? Datang dari ilium. Kan? So, the remaining mixture atau the remaining di, uh, digested food in the small intestine after absorption will enter the colon and atau will enter the large intestine. Lepas tu dekat point kedua baru kita ceritalah uh, apa the remaining uh, what are the contents of the remaining mixture macam yang disebut oleh Um, Nurin, Wan Nurin Kistina ni ha, Wan Nurin Kistina ada cerita Dalam tu ada uh, Dead cells uh, Apa Mana tadi Saya perasan Okay ha, dia bagi tahu ada dead cells Dan kita juga boleh tambah uh, Ada water Ada undigested food Ada bacteria dan juga Selulose. Ha, kita boleh tambah kat situ lah the contents of the um, apa mixture that enters the colon. Okay. So, itu step uh, step number two. Tadi step number one kita kata after absorption of nutrient, the remaining mixture enters the large intestine. Dalam mixture tu ada apa? Ada water, ada undigested food, ada dead cells, ada cellulose. That is point number two. Uh, I agree with you um, when you say uh, the mixture move along the large intestine Uh, use through peristaltic motion atau kalau kamu tulis uh, the mixture move along the intestine large intestine via peristalsis melalui proses peristalsis pun betul ya benda yang sama that is a very good idea and then saya juga suka bila kamu sebut large intestine secret mucus to smoothen the movement atau to lubricate the movement betul saya setuju And then, um, 
absorption of minerals, salts and water uh, takes place until feces are formed. Okay. So, kalau uh, untuk cerita pasal uh, feces tu kumpul dekat rectum, lepas tu anus akan con the, apa? Uh, the wall of rectum will expel, will contract and expel the feces. Itu bukan formation of feces. Itu adalah proses defecation. So, soalan dia tanya formation of feces saja. So, sampai uh, sampai cerita dia sampai uh, apa the large intestine absorb apa daripada mixture tersebut lah cukup. Okay. Uh, so, number one. Nutrient uh, from nutrient are absorbed completely. Nutrient, sorry, sorry. After the absorption of nutrient in the small intestine, the remaining mixture enters the large intestine. Point number one. Point number two. The remaining mixture contains water, undigested food, bacteria, dead cells, and also cellulose. This mixture move along the large intestine. Uh, move along the large intestine. Um, through peristalsis, uh, facilitated by peristalsis and also saya su juga setuju when you say large intestine secret mucus to lubricate the movement of the mixture. Pada masa yang sama, the large intestine absorb uh, water and mineral salts atau vitamins uh, until semi solid substance called feces are formed okay so uh, untuk yang ni i think this is very simple but effective ya eh? okey okey dia nak tambah dah saya baru nak tunjuk nanti jap tambah dulu 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Okey, jawapan Alina ni adalah jawapan yang baik ya. Very simple. Ha, dapat dah empat markah. Okey. So, saya screenshot dulu. Um, satu, uh, apa, uh, jawapan Alina ni dah dapat empat markah. Satu yang kita boleh tambah dekat sini ialah itulah uh, large intestine secret mucus. Saya perasan ad, ramai juga yang tulis pasal, oh sorry, ramai juga yang tulis uh, large intestine secret mucus tu. Itu adalah poin yang baik. Boleh juga ditulis dalam um, untuk soalan ini ya. Untuk explanation ini. Okay. I give you another 30 seconds to update your answer. Okey, tinggal lagi 3 second. Saya minta maaf Ashraf, nanti saya akan uh, buka pedek ni kepada student page sebab kita, saya baru dapat a few messages from your friends yang dia tak dapat masuk hari ni. So saya akan buka ni sebagai student page. You can refer to the uh, sample answer that I given uh, I've already shared with you in the Telegram ya. Yeah? Okey. So uh, hari ini <coughs> Basically kita dah tengok uh, assimilation of digested food dan um, formation of feces. Kita tahu uh, kita dah discuss sebelum ni uh, absorption of digested food tu berlaku di dalam ileum dan apakah adaptation of structures that actually do the work which is the villus lah. Kita panggil structure yang buat kerja tu ialah Villus. Nanti kita tengok dalam kidney, the functional unit is um, nephron dan sebagainya lah. Okey, lepas tu kita dah tengok assimilation yang buat kerja-kerja assimilation. Uh, the first the first organ yang buat kerja-kerja assimilation tu ialah liver because it function as a checkpoint untuk check. Okey, glukos, 
uh, glukos berlebih buat apa, glukos digunakan untuk apa, untuk dia sendiri guna glukos untuk apa dan glukos yang bakinya dihantar ke seluruh sel. Amino acid pula excess converted to urea um, and excreted via um, urine via the formation of urine. Dan last kali kita tengok yang kita, yang kamu dah jawab ni ialah formation of feces. So, um, bila kita reflect balik apa yang kita alami semasa defecation hari-hari, ya. Yeah. <laughs> dia buat O pula. Okey, sempat Ashraf tulis. Ha, asyik baik. Sama masa saya buat summary tu, dia sempat tulis. Bagus Ashraf. Okey, bila kita reflect balik proses defecation kita hari-hari, uh, <coughs> saya apa, kita kena, uh, kita boleh uh, reflect dan bandingkan balik uh, fisis yang kita hasil, kot angkut hasilkan tu dengan scale inilah. Nama scale ni ialah Bristol Stool Form Scale. So kalau jenis satu dengan dua tu indicate constipation sebab uh, apa the mixture atau the feces move very slow inside our large intestine menyebabkan uh, penyerapan air tu berlaku terlalu banyak. Uh, excessive absorption of water, our the feces become very dry and untuk type 3 and type 4 uh, ideal stool that is, is they are easier to pass while 5 to 7 tu may indicate diarrhea sebab apa uh, sebab kita punya large intestine mungkin the surface has uh, bacterial infection ke atau ada uh, apa um, ada cat, ada ulcer ke dan sebagainya menyebabkan uh, kita punya large intestine cannot absorb water. So uh, the stool atau the feces is very watery sebab badan kita tak absorb water kan. Sebab itulah orang diarrhea ni dia apa uh, dehydrated uh, sebab dia tak dapat reabsorb water, tak dapat absorb water from the uh, digested food. Okay so um, bil apakah tanda-tanda uh, yang kita punya apa large intestine ni is a healthy bowel. So basically uh, antara tanda-tanda dia ialah uh, regular defecation tak semestinya uh, mesti hari-hari tapi dia punya julat dia ialah kita defecate one to three times a day atau dalam satu minggu tu three times per week. Uh, ada setengah orang dia memang selang sehari baru dia pergi uh, apa berak kan. So it is understandable and it is considered as regular. Lepas tu untuk uh, orang dewasa I think most of you has reached that particular stage uh, antara in signs of a healthy bowel is bila kita ada rasa nak buang air besar uh, we can hold on for a short time after we feel the first urge to go to the toilet and then um, bila kita uh, buang air besar tu kita tak tunggu lama lah within about a minute or so of sitting down tu we can pass a bowel motion and it occurs easily without pain. Tak ada nak kena meneran ke apa. Uh, dan bila kita pergi buang air tu, we can completely empty our bowel when we pass motion. Tak perlulah pergi patah balik ke tandas sebab uh, tadi tu tak selesai. Sesi buang air besar tadi tu tak selesai lah. So saya first time saya jumpa Carta ni bila saya pergi medik, buat medical check up di hospital So saya rasa oh menarik juga kalau ada poster-poster macam ni dekat tandas kan So hopefully it, this poster also helps you to reflect on your uh, bowel movement lah Nanti at, uh, at the next topic kita akan tengok uh, how uh, apa how does our he apa, eating habits affects our health. Apakah uh, kesan pemilihan pemakanan kita terhadap kita punya kesihatan. So tadi saya janji kita nak habis 10 minit awal untuk bagi ruang untuk kawan-kawan kita yang belum makan. So can you provide some feedback?
uh, regarding to this lesson, ada part-part yang masih lagi susah. Uh, what did you like? What didn't you like? You don't like to talk about tahi ke, for example. Or what was easy and what was hard. Oh, formation of thesis tu masih lagi ni ya. Okay, okay. Noted. Hmm. Dia kalau apa If you try saya, saya tahu dalam kelas ni ada yang dah travel to Australia Dia punya kalau kita pergi Australia Nama-nama dia Nama-nama tempat dia tu macam agak susah juga untuk kita sebut Sebab the app origins over there dia tak ada ancestral root dia tak sama macam kita Tapi bila kita pergi New Zealand Banyak perkataan-perkataan dia macam Eh ini dalam kita punya kosa kata ada Ah ok ada soalan Kalau susah nak berak tu ada efek kat dalam anus tu ke? Yes uh, ada uh, Regular nak kata apa ya Bila berlaku regular friction sebab kita punya najis tu keras atau uh, apa there is not enough mucus to help assist defecation mm uh, dia itulah antara tanda-tanda uh, apa uh, nama dia buasi buasi uh, maknanya macam eh kejap a uh, Okay, saya ingatkan ada messages kat sini. So, buasi tu where a part of our rectum terkeluar daripada anus. Sebab selalu regular constipation atau regularly susah nak berak. So, dia jadi, itulah jadi kesian lah kalau kamu pernah jumpa orang kena buasi ni, dia sampai tahap bila dia duduk, dia kena duduk atas apa tu? Macam sort of macam pelampung supaya dia punya anus tu tidak tidak tertindih bila duduk. So, kesian lah. Hmm, tapi dia adalah prosedur dia untuk uh, apa mengatasi bu buasi tu dia tak adalah menderita lama ya. Okey. Ha, tapi kalau ada masalah tu you have to take precautionary precautionary steps lah untuk mengatasi masalah susah nak berak tu. Hmm. Okey. Oh, okey. Soalan empat markah tu kind of hard. Okey, nanti kita cuba lagi. Hmm, kemudian uh, Oh ada ke, apa kena mengena Ada kena mengena ke dengan apa yang kita makan With our blood pressure Of course um, The uh, Apa ya nak kata High intake of salt High intake of salt Increase our blood pressure High intake of cholesterol uh, Apa menyebabkan salur darah tersumbat juga menyebabkan high blood pressure. Hmm, kejap. Uh, so that is some of it lah. Uh, tapi uh, physiological, uh, sorry, psychological situation pun boleh juga. Macam stress uh, juga boleh menyebabkan increase in high blood pressure. Okay, answering exam best exam exam based questions ya. Tak tahu important point. Okay, mari kita cuba for marks ya. Oh, sebab have to shorten. Yes. Ha, sebab tu kita kena tahu essentials. Essential points. Okay, tak apa. Kita cuba lagi, okay? Kalau makan laxative, apa yang menyebabkan? Okay. Ah, oh, hemorrhoid. Yes, Ashraf. Betul tu, hemorrhoid. Mm -mm. Buasi tu hemorrhoid. Betul. Oh yes. Satu lagi jangan lupa isi kehadiran pada bahagian messages. Okay. Laxative tu macam mana uh, menyebabkan kita buang air besar. Hmm. Yang, yang ni saya kena baca balik. Sebab saya tak sure dia laxative ni dia Uh, bagi efek tang mana. So nanti saya akan address this particular question hari Jumaat ya. Yeah? So saya pun tak sure. Hmm, okay. So uh, thank you so much for your reflection and don't forget to uh, submit your attendance ya. Yeah? So thank you so much all 31, 32, sebenarnya ada 33 orang yang masuk hari ni. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your attention and for your participation. Sekian wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum. See you this Friday.